Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video is gonna be me showing you my entire perfume collection. That's right, we're gonna go through every single perfume that I own. <laughs> I have been doing a lot of curating, so I've been doing a lot of decluttering, buying fragrances that I truly love, and getting rid of the ones that I don't, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job at curating my collection and having fragrances that I know I will truly wear, but I still have a little bit of work to do. So I want to give you guys my updated 2023 perfume collection today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here. And if you like this video and you find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's do this. Okay, for those of you who are gonna ask how I store my perfumes, I'm not showing it to you simply because it's not impressive, okay? <laughs> I store my perfumes in my closet. I have a walk-in closet with some built-in shelves in it and I keep my perfumes in there. I am looking into getting more shelving so that I can actually display my fragrances because my collection is growing to the point where that is no longer going to hold all of my fragrances, so I need to come up with a new system. And once I do get that in place, I'll probably show you guys my new setup, but right now it's just in my messy closet <laughs> and I'm not showing you guys that right now okay okay these perfumes are in no particular order I'm not gonna go in like alphabetical order or anything like that but I will try to stick with the same house you know all the perfumes in one house so the first one is by Swiss Arabian and this is Casablanca this is my only Swiss Arabian this is a very very sweet green apple and caramel fragrance that I love to wear during Halloween this is by Carolina Herrera and this is very good girl this is my very favorite Good Girl. I'm not the biggest fan of the original Good Girl, but I love the very Good Girl flanker. This is lychee. This is rose. It's kind of tart. It's sweet. It's rosy. It's creamy. It's vanilla. And I truly enjoy this one. And I, I'm one of the ones that loves this bottle. You know, this is, this is a cute bottle in my opinion. And I really enjoy this one. I also have Very Good Girl Glam. And this smells a lot like Very Good Girl, except there's an added cherry and almond in here, I believe. And I do pick that up. And I actually really, really like it. And I know this wasn't like the most popular flanker ever. I don't think everybody loved this one, but I really like it. I like the added cherry and almond twist to the already creamy rosy vibe that was Very Good Girl. So I personally like Very Good Girl Glam and yeah, I think it's a really good performing perfume and I enjoy this flanker. Up next we have by Zara. This is my only Zara and this is Rose Gourmand. This is a almost spot on dupe for Rose's Vinny by Montal, except in my opinion this smells a little bit smoother and I do really enjoy this one. This is a very inexpensive fragrance. I can't be sniffing all these, you know? I knew I was going to do that. I knew I was going to start taking off the caps and smelling them just what, four? Four fragrances in, I already started. So this is a very good dupe for Rose's Vanille. It has that yummy, rosy, vanilla, amber, just deliciousness, very sweet, very strong. This is just as strong as Rose's Vanille. This is a beast mode, and you don't need a lot of sprays of this, and I'm super impressed because this was less than $30, and now I don't need Rose's Vanille. Okay, I have two by Montal. The first one is Ristretto Intense Cafe. This is my favorite one. I prefer this much more over the original Intense Cafe because there is a lot of coffee in here. So this is coffee, this is rose, and vanilla, very ambery, warm. I think there's caramel in the base. It's very delicious, very strong, beast mode, great winter scent that I absolutely love. And if you like a lot of coffee in your fragrances, this is definitely the version. Over the original Intense Cafe, I would definitely recommend Ristretto Intense Cafe for sure. And then we also have Chocolate Greedy, which is one of my favorite chocolate scents ever. This smells like Nesquik, like a packet of Nesquik powdery chocolate. Like you just opened it up and you're smelling it right out of the packet basically. And it also has some dried fruits in it. This is a very comfy, cozy fragrance that I love to wear during the winter. All right, up next, we're gonna go over my Kaoli collection. I have all of them except for two of them. I'm a pretty big fan of Kaoli. I like most of their fragrances. Let's start with the minis that I have. So I have Musk 12, and I think the mini is all I will need of this. I think this is a great fragrance if you're into musk-centric fragrances. But for me, I like a little bit 
more with my musk fragrances. I really think this is beautiful though. And one I didn't like at all was Citrus 08. This one I didn't like in the beginning when I first tried it, but now I absolutely love it. And I wore this one last summer a lot, as you can see. Uh, these travel sprays really last a long time, by the way. I wore this quite a few times. So as soon as I get through this, as soon as summer starts, I'm gonna wanna wear this again. I'll have a couple of wears of this, and then this is definitely a full bottle for me because this surprised me. This is grapefruit, very citrusy in the opening, but then it has rose in it as well. It's just beautiful, and I really enjoyed this one. So I didn't like it at all, and now I absolutely love it. This is Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21, and I really love this one as well. This is a creamy coconut fragrance, but there's a lot of white florals in here. The jasmine is very prominent in here. And that surprised me. When I first got this, that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting a coconut forward fragrance. The coconut's definitely in here, but the jasmine is strong in here as well, but it's very smooth. And then I have Eden Juicy Apple 01. This is one I really enjoyed during the summer as well. I wore this a lot during the summer on really, really hot days. It reminds me of like a pool party, like the fruits that you would bring to a pool party or the sweet, fruity cocktails you would drink on a hot summer day sipping drinks at the pool, you know? This is fun, very youthful, carefree. It's so fun, I really like this one. I'm a big apple person. I really get a lot of that red apple in here. It's very, very, very sweet. So my full size bottles of Kayali, I have Deja Vu White Flower 57. I had a travel spray of this one. I already went through it. I absolutely love this fragrance. This is such a beautiful white floral in my opinion. This has fruitiness in the opening. I'm a sucker for a fruity, sweet white floral fragrance. I really like that combination and this is absolutely gorgeous. And I get really good performance out of this one. Not really good. It's not like a beast or super strong, but it's pretty moderate smelling and I can definitely smell this on me for a good part of my day. And then of course we have the classic Vanilla 28. This is perfect for layering. This is basically vanilla and brown sugar and I think it smells like a baked good. It smells like you're baking a vanilla cake or something like that with some brown sugar. Pretty self-explanatory, love this one. I think this is a staple in everyone's collection if you love vanilla and yeah, I, I love it. Vanilla 28 by Kayali. And then we have Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. I really, really like this one. I have put quite the dent in here. This is an easy fragrance to wear. The only downfall to this one is I don't find the performance to be super great. Four hours, maybe five maximum is all I get. But for those four hours, I really enjoy it. And it's a decent sillage for those four hours. It's moderate performing. I love the way that it smells. This is a delicious, yummy, edible, juicy cherry, like a yummy, delicious, like Tom Ford's Lost Cherry type of cherry in the opening, but then there's Palo Santo in here, so it definitely dries down different from Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. It's very woody in the dry down. It smells like a hot sauna to me. I just think it's fantastic. The scent is fantastic. I just wish that it lasted a little bit longer, but Anyway, I still, I still love and recommend this one if you're a big woody cherry fan. All right, and then we have, it used to be my favorite Kaeli for the longest time. This was number one for me. It has been dethroned, but it's still a love for sure. This is Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. I love this fragrance. I had a small travel size first, went through that one, like burned through it like nobody's business and had to get a full-size bottle. This one, I don't wear quite as much as I used to, but there was a time when I was reaching for this non-stop. I couldn't stop talking about it. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I used to rave about this fragrance. I still think it's absolutely wonderful. This is pink pepper. This is rose. This is like a jammy rose. There's something dark in the base. People say it kind of smells like oud, but I don't like oud. And I don't think there's oud listed in here, but it does kind of give off like the most wearable oudy Middle Eastern vibe, but like for beginners. If you don't like oud and if you are afraid of Middle Eastern scents and you need like a baby beginner one, <laughs> this is the one because trust me, I don't like oud and I love this fragrance. Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper is still a favorite, but she has been dethroned by Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64. This is my favorite Kayali. I know this one is super controversial, very polarizing, and people do not get the same thing. There are so many different viewpoints in how this smells. People pick up different notes in here, 
and people have very strong feelings about this fragrance. I personally am one who loves it. I gave this one a very good review. I was in love with it. It was love at first sniff. I didn't have to take time to figure out if I loved it. First spray and I was like, oh my god, yes. Mm, I love this one. This one has rum, a lot of rum. You have to be into boozy notes. It's vanilla, it's patchouli. I get a lot of patchouli in here. I don't pick up oud, I pick up a little bit of leather. Everybody picks up something different, I swear. You have got to try this for yourself because who knows what you're gonna smell in this perfume. Okay, I have one fragrance by Nobile 1942. This is La Danza del Lebelubule. <laughs> I'm never gonna get that. The Dance of the Dragonflies. This is such a beautiful fragrance. I love this one and I am so surprised. Look at this dent that I've put in here, by the way. I really haven't had this for very long. It's only like a couple of months, I think, since I got this. I sneak wares of this one a lot. Even though this one's not on my tray, I do crave this fragrance, as you can tell, and I wear this one quite often. And I was not happy with the performance of this when I first got it, but I will say it gets stronger with time. So the last time I wore it, it was a pretty nice sillage and I could definitely smell it on me. I remember the first time I wore it, I wore it out to dinner and I was kind of struggling to smell it through the night and I wasn't very happy about that. But now when I wear it, I don't struggle to smell it. It's still not a beast or anything, but it's, it's getting stronger. So this is a apple sweet, has a little bit of cinnamon in it type of fragrance. It's very sweet and it kind of reminds me of an apple turnover, but then it has like some other notes in it that makes it not super gourmand. That also kind of reminds me of like an apple shampoo. So it's like a cross between a gourmand actual apple turnover with an apple shampoo-y vibe. <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I love this one. I think it's so good. Like I said, Apple's one of my favorite notes in fragrances. Very happy that I blind bought this one in 2022, and yeah, I wear this one quite a bit. All right, let's go over my Parfums de Marley collection. I have four from Parfums de Marley. I have two from the men's line and two from the women's line. So I have Oriana, and this one is marshmallow and whipped cream and orange blossom, and I think there's some raspberry in here. It's fruity sweet, definitely has that like, I don't know if it's marshmallow, but maybe it's whipped cream or I think it's Chantilly cream and that's what's in here. Maybe there's marshmallow in here too. It smells very like fluffy, you know? It just reminds me of something fluffy. It also has kind of like a clean smell to it as well, like a laundry dryer sheet kind of feel to it, just a little bit. And I kind of like it. I like the combination of this like super gourmand, sweet, fluffy fragrance with a hint of like clean to it. It makes it not so sweet to my nose, and I really love this one. And then also I have Delina Exclusive. This is one of my favorite perfumes. We all know about this one. This is lychee, this is rose, this is creamy, a little bit powdery, a lot of vanilla, a little bit of oud and incense in here, just a tiny, tiny touch just to give the perfume some depth. Very sweet, but a little bit of tartness as well, very rosy but the tartness is nowhere near the tartness of the original Delina because it has that rhubarb note in there. But I love Delina Exclusive. This is still my favorite Delina. Beast Mode, by the way, this one will definitely last you for your entire day. Speaking of Beast Mode, I think this is, is it Wajan or Ojan? I think it's Wajan, I don't know. I'm probably saying it wrong. I've probably been saying it wrong this whole entire time. Maybe it's Wajan, Ojan, whatever. It's this one. This is an extremely strong fragrance. This is beast, beast, beast mode. You know what? I haven't put a perfume on for today. This one's kind of calling my name because this is absolutely beautiful. This is cinnamon. This is warm. This is ambery. This has some honey in it. It has osmanthus. Somehow it translates to like a spiced apple to my nose, which I know a lot of people get that with this fragrance. But then in the base, there's like a deep base. I would not consider this a gourmand. This has too many other things like patchouli and musk. Very spicy, very warm, very ambery, and it's kind of cold and like rainy out today, and this seems like this is going to be the perfect... Okay, that's it. That's all I need because this is strong. And then my last one by Parfums de Marley is Herod. This one absolutely took my breath away. I was in a boutique in Charleston and I was not even looking at the men's collection because at that time I really didn't think that I was into anything that would be marketed towards men like Ojan was not or Wajan <laughs> was not on my list. And I wasn't even looking at it, you know, but just out of curiosity, I decided to go over and check out the men's 
offerings and I tried Herod and my eyes rolled in the back of my head. This is sweet, delicious tobacco with some vanilla and there's a lot of cinnamon in the opening. I freaking love cinnamon in my perfumes. I love this perfume so, so much. This is a very, very strong love of mine. I'm pretty much obsessed with this and I'm so happy to have it. So I'm glad that I stepped outside my comfort zone and tried something new because I would never have picked this one up either if I hadn't given this one a chance. So that is by Parfums de Marley Herod, a gorgeous tobacco and cinnamon warm fragrance that I absolutely love. Okay, I have two from the House of Oud. The first one is What About Pop? And I love this one. This one's not a love at first sniff. I blind bought this one. I didn't know what to think of it, but this smells like a realistic caramel popcorn with some salt. And I wasn't sure how to feel about that, but then I gave it a couple of wears and it really, really grew on me. And now it's a full blown love. You have to be into realistic foodie gourmands because to me, this smells exactly <laughs> like salty caramel popcorn. But if you like that kind of thing, I think you'd really like this one. Great performance on this one. And then we have Dates Delight, which is one of my favorite fragrances. I absolutely adore this. This is sweet, delicious, yummy dates with some honey, with some sugar. It's a semi-gourmand because there's also peony in here and there's something in the base that's a little bit dark smelling that keeps this from being full on fruity. Mm, it's so good though. The performance of this is absolutely fantastic. It does smell like a baking date dessert with some non-gourmand notes and I just think it's so dark and sexy and seductive and beautiful. All right, let's go over my perfumes that I have by Lancome. So the first one is La Via Belle Intensement is this one. I had to think for a second. This is one with the raspberry in it and this is super fun. This is a sexy, kind of playful, very girly. I picture like a girl's night out type of scenario wearing this for sure. Definitely not anything serious, but I do really like this one. I think this is a lot easier to wear than the original La Via Belle. That one is very, very heavy on patchouli. This one is not. Just a sweet raspberry fragrance. I think it's a lot of fun. I do enjoy this one. And then we have Idol Aura. This is a salty vanilla rose fragrance. It somehow translates to me as a little bit like watermelon. Salty watermelon. That's what I get from this with some vanilla. I don't know, somehow the salt and the rose mixed together smells like watermelon to me. It's such a great summertime fragrance. Absolutely amazing performance, but you do have to like salty fragrances in order to like this because the salt is definitely present. This isn't everybody's favorite. Okay, we have a flanker of La Via Belle that did not get everybody's approval. <laughs> This is La Via Belle Soleil Cristal, I think. Is that what that's called? Yeah, Soleil Cristal is what this is called, I believe. This is beautiful. I don't care what anybody says, okay? This is beautiful. This is a sweet vanilla coconut, really good performing fragrance, and I loved it. I love this fragrance. I loved it at first sniff, and I still love it. I know not everybody does, but I just, I think it's beautiful. Plus, I like the bottle. I think the bottle's really pretty. But this is a strong fragrance. If you're looking for a sweet summertime coconut vanilla fragrance that will last you all day long, this one is absolutely fantastic for the performance, which that is how Lancome fragrances are, in my opinion. Lancome fragrances last. I mean, they know how to make a perfume that lasts, in my opinion. But anyway, I think this one's beautiful. I really, really like it for summertime. And then we have La Nuit Tresor. This is the original. Love, love, love this perfume. This is very sweet praline with some patchouli and licorice in the base. So it has that combination that I love, sweet, delicious fruits in the opening. The fruit I get the most from this is strawberry, and then I get this sweet vibe, and then as it dries down, it starts to get into a deeper base with that patchouli and licorice combo that if you've been watching my channel, you know I absolutely love. It's super sexy. Plus, this is a compliment getter, which by the way, both of these are. These two gave me massive compliments in 2022, so. Love this one, very good performance as well. All right, up next I have three fragrances from Juliana's Perfumes, which is a dupe house. They make inspired versions of other fragrances and all three of these fragrances were sent over to me by the brand. The first one is Head Over Heels. This is a dupe for Killian's Rolling in Love. Did not like this fragrance at first, but now I absolutely love it. I just, the sillage of this is absolutely beautiful. This is that powdery, almondy type of fragrance. It has this like misty, 
soft powdery scent in the air like this gorgeous scent bubble around you all day it smells super good and it's kind of hard to explain but I was almost gonna get rid of this one I was going to declutter this but then I fell in love with it up next we have liquid gold this is a dupe for MFK's gentle fluidity gold which I have tested them side by side and this is a spot on dupe in my opinion this smells exactly like gentle fluidity gold they did such a good job with this one and I was actually thinking about buying gentle fluidity gold because I think it's an absolutely fantastic fragrance but now that I have this one I just don't see the need I'm happy with this one it performs really well it smells identical and yeah I just don't feel the need to go out and spend money on that fragrance when I have this one and I'm super happy with it and then we have Aphrodite's Rose which is a dupe for Atomic Rose and this one I did not find to be a spot-on dupe but I did think it was pretty close probably about 90% the same. I think the opening is what's a little bit different and I do find Aphrodite's Rose to be a touch sweeter than Atomic Rose. Atomic Rose goes a little bit deeper. I have like a gazillion samples of Atomic Rose because I kept trying to decide if I wanted to actually bring it into my collection or not. I truly love the scent, but every time I wear it, I feel like it's not me, if that makes sense. But anyway, really good dupe, but not spot on. I have one by Exidolo. This is Love and Crime. This smells a lot like Lyra from Zerzhov, but much, much better performing in my opinion. And also, it's different. It has like a spicy kick to it. There's pink pepper in the opening. There's star anise in here as well. And there's also more orange than there is lemon. Like, Lyra smells like a lemon cookie where this smells more on the orange side. I prefer this one for sure. I don't own Lyra just because I much prefer Love and Crime. And then we have Beach Walk by Replica or from the Replica line. This is by Maison Margiela. This is described as sun-kissed salty skin. I think that's a perfect, perfect representation of what this smells like. That's pretty much what it smells like. And I love it. I wear this one on hot summer days. I think it's perfect for hot summer days, especially when I'm gonna take walks on the beach with my husband. Okay, I have two by Mancera. This one is Coco Vini, another super fun one for the summer. Cannot wait for summertime because this one is very vanilla forward with some creamy coconut. There's a lot of tropical florals in here too and some fruity notes. It's just a really fun, easy to wear summertime fragrance. It smells to me just like summer. So really enjoy this one. Plus the performance of this isn't as beastly as a lot of Mancera's are, which is good because it's good performance, don't get me wrong, but I don't want this to be super loud because I wanna wear this on hot, hot summer days. So Coco Vini, I love this one. And then we have my loved Velvet Vanilla. This is such a good fragrance. I really, truly love this one. I'm putting a dent in this one because uh, it's on my tray for January. I was craving tuberose and this is hitting the spot for me in January. January for sure. This smells like a tuberose bomb, so you have to like tuberose. Don't let the name fool you, okay? Velvet Vanilla. <laughs> There's vanilla in here in the base, but this is mostly a tuberose white floral scent, so keep that in mind. But I, I love it. There's Angelica in here as well, which to me I normally don't like, but it's so softly in here. I can make it out, but to me it helps round the fragrance out and it keeps it from being too sweet. So this is a creamy tuberose, bubblegummy tuberose with some creamy vanilla and a little bit of greenness. And yeah. I just love this one. Beast Mode. This is a Beast Mode fragrance. And then we have by Ascada. This is Agua del Sol. This is one of those fragrances I wear if I'm going to go to the pool or the beach or something like that. This does not have very good performance, but it just smells very tropical. One of those easy, I don't have to think about it, hot, hot summer days where it's not going to be too much. The performance is not really that great, but it smells very tropical and a lot of fun for days when I just need something like that. All right, let's go over my Chanel fragrances. So first up, we have, of course, the classic, iconic Coco Mademoiselle. I love this one. I think this smells amazing. And yeah, this is citrusy, patchouli, very classy, very elegant, iconic fragrance that you probably know what it smells like. I think Coco Mademoiselle is absolutely beautiful. I do slightly prefer Coco Mademoiselle Intense. This is a darker has more vanilla and more patchouli, a little bit less citrusy. And this one's really great for fall and winter. These are both beast mode fragrances, very strong. And they just smell so classy and so elegant. 
and sophisticated to me. I adore both of them, but slightly prefer the intense version. And then from the Chance line, I have Ofresh, and this is an EDT, but as I always tell you guys, this performs really well on me, even though this is an EDT, this lasts all day, and this is my most, well, my second most complimented fragrance of all time, and this is the only one that I do have a backup bottle of. I actually got this for a really good deal, um, so I couldn't pass it up. I usually don't get backup bottles, but I knew that I was going to probably run out of this one this coming spring and summer, because it is definitely one of my favorite summertime fragrances. It is... A freshy for people who don't like freshies. I always say that it has some woodiness to it, some depth to it. So it's not just a straight up freshy, even though it does smell like a freshy, if that makes sense. I also have my Chance Eau Tund, which is another one I will definitely be getting another bottle of once I go through this one. This is one of my favorite springtime fragrances to wear. This is one of my like everyday fragrances. This is just so classy and elegant smelling, so feminine. It's very fruity. It's got quince in the opening. It's like a fruity, musky, clean girl vibe. Very pretty, like pretty girl vibes for sure. And this is the EDP, by the way, and I prefer this one over the EDT just because it has better performance. I slightly prefer the way this smells as well. This is a little bit more on the floral side where the EDT is more on the fruity side. Kind of has a little bit of a shampoo-y vibe to it as well that I really find quite lovely to wear in the spring and summer. So definitely we'll be getting another bottle of this. And then the other chance I have is the original. This is the EDP as well. I think this also comes in an EDT version, but the EDP is my preference. This is pink pepper. This is jasmine and patchouli. Classic Chanel patchouli. Very classic smelling. Sophisticated and elegant. I'm, that's pretty much how I'm going to describe all of my Chanel fragrances because that's how I view them all. I have something, there's something about Chanel perfumes for me. There's something in the DNA of Chanel that I just love, which I used to hate. I used to hate Chanel fragrances when I was younger. Very new to my collection, we have Coco Noir. I used to think I hated this fragrance, but I absolutely love it now, and I get pretty decent performance out of this. That's actually why I didn't buy this for the longest time is because I didn't think it performed very well, but I get okay performance from it. And it's very, again, classy, sophisticated, lots of cloves, very warm, very spicy, clove, heavy, chewy, you know, classic Chanel. <laughs> I love this one. My husband's not a fan though, I gotta say. And he's also not a fan of this one. This is the Coco Eau de Parfum from the 80s. This is like the 1984 version. And I think this smells incredible, very warm, spicy, cloves, civet type of vintage-y 1984 type of perfume smell, but I love both of these. This one definitely smells a little bit more modern for sure. I definitely have to be in the mood for this one. I don't think I need a bottle any bigger than this to last me probably my lifetime because it is very rare that I get in the mood for this one, but I just cannot declutter it. I cannot part with it. I think it's beautiful. And then we have Gabrielle. This is Essence. And this is such a beautiful summertime fragrance. This one is definitely a lot more modern. Yeah, very mu much more modern than like the Coco and Coco Noir fragrances. Much easier to wear. Still has that classic Chanel vibe to it, but it's very floral, musky, clean, summertime appropriate beautiful fragrance and yeah I put a dent in it last summer. Okay I have one fragrance from Narcotica and this is Dulce Diablo which means sweet devil and it really is. I just adore this. I've raved about it so much I'm not going to go into too much detail but this is boozy, very boozy, rum and cognac in the opening, lots and lots of apricots, cacao which translates to me as Tootsie Rolls. I actually wore this last night and it really did, <laughs> it did legitimately make me crave Tootsie Rolls. And my husband went out and got me Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> I have got to stop getting gourmand fragrances, I swear. I'm gonna just gain so much weight, I swear. These, some of these fragrances truly make me crave like actual not good for you food. <laughs> okay, I have two from Navitas Parfums. I have Chocolate Queen, which is the collaboration with Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes. This is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion, and it completely exceeded my expectations. I thought this was gonna be a gourmand, sickeningly sweet. I love gourmands, okay, don't get me wrong, but with all the like 
super rich notes in here. I thought this was going to be a mess, like sickening sweet, just too much, <laughs> too decadent for me, you know, like chocolate upon chocolate upon chocolate. But actually the way it's done, there's bitter almond, there's woody notes. There are notes in here that keeps it toned down so it never gets over the top sweet. You're just left with this fun gourmand ride. <laughs> that you go on where you can pretty much smell all the gourmand notes in here. There's a point where I can smell hazelnut, caramel, fudge. I genuinely smell fudge in here at one point, like in the mid of this perfume. And I actually went and made fudge. See, I can't, yeah, this is not good. This is not good for my waistline. And then this one I knew I was gonna love. This one's not really a surprise to me. This is Venom of Love. This is in collaboration with Paulina Shar. I knew I was gonna love it because this is cherries and chocolate, and it smells like a chocolate covered cherry. So this one is not linear at all. This one is pretty complex and takes you through like this cool journey. This one pretty much smells like a chocolate covered cherry, a cherry cordial through the entire wear, but in the opening, I definitely get a booziness. So it's a boozy chocolate covered cherry with that yummy creaminess in the middle. It's delectable, it's delicious, I love it. I get really good performance out of it. And when I want to smell like a cherry cordial, this is, that's exactly what this smells like to me. Up next we have a fragrance that I feel is very underrated. And this is by Tiffany & Co. This is Tiffany Intense. Why do more people not talk about this? This is a great fragrance. Like this is such a good perfume that has great performance and smells incredible. And I don't know, this is an iris soft powdery irisy, but not soft as in weak. Like it's just soft smelling. It's very feminine smelling. There's carrot seed in here. It's so good. I adore this one. This is such an easy reach perfume. This would be a great signature scent. I have one by Jacette Parfums. This is Accident All of the Knee. This is pretty new to my collection and I absolutely love it. I did test this one before I bought it, had a sample, and I knew I was getting a full bottle of this. It's delicious, but this is another foodie gourmand. Like this is a realistic edible baked goods. It smells like baking vanilla cookies with some caramel drizzle. If you like realistic foodie gourmands and you want to smell like a cookie, <laughs> then this is it. Really good performance on this one too. And then this is one of my favorite vanillas in my collection. This is by the Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods, one of my most worn fragrances of 2022. This is pear, rose, vanilla, and caramel in the base. That's mostly what I get in the base. I get this vanilla caramel swirl and I enjoy the sillage of this so, so much. It's so comforting. I love this one. And then we have an extremely affordable gem in my opinion. This is by Elizabeth and James. This is Nirvana Amethyst. And this is one of the fragrances that introduced me to tobacco and made me realize I genuinely love tobacco. So this is spicy, a little bit spicy. It has some spices in it. it, has honeysuckle and tobacco. This smells so good. This smells high-end to me. This does not smell like a cheap perfume even though I think I paid like 30 bucks for this. Some people complain about the performance. It's not the best in the world but I've had worse for sure and for 30 bucks I'm really not going to complain about it because I don't really get horrible performance with it. It lasts pretty well on me. I mean it's okay. You know it's moderate. Not not great, but not terrible. If you want a beginner friendly tobacco fragrance that still smells pretty feminine, then give this one a shot. I think it's a fantastic fragrance. Okay, I have three fragrances from Killian. I have Angel Share. If you've been watching my channel, you know this is my favorite perfume of all time. No other perfume on the planet makes me feel as happy and I have the most enjoyment when I wear this fragrance. This is incredible. I will always have this. This is a lifer for me. Have to have it. So this is boozy cinnamon apple pie with some woody notes in the base. It smells like a semi gourmand. It still smells like a perfume, okay? It doesn't smell like a true apple pie. <laughs> it definitely has woody notes. It has oak in the base, which keeps this from being too sweet in my opinion, but it is still pretty sweet. Some people say this leans masculine, but I just don't think it does. I think this is a perfectly unisex fragrance. Almost leans feminine to me because it's so sweet, but I, can, I know men wear this too, and yeah, it can be for anyone. So it performs very well on me. It definitely radiates off my skin, and I adore Angel Share by Killian. I also have Apple Brandy on the Rocks. This is definitely a lighter version. This is a spring and summer version in my opinion. Some people say it's a spring and summer version of Angel Share, which I get that because this is very boozy, obviously, you know, it's called Apple Brandy on the Rocks. <laughs> I think there was an Apple Brandy originally that wasn't on the Rocks. It was just Apple Brandy. I never did get a chance to smell that one. 
But anyway, this one's gorgeous. I love this one. This does lean a little bit more, like I can see how people would find this a little bit more masculine, but I still think it's more unisex than anything. Like I still feel comfortable wearing this. It's more of a fresh apple than an apple pie. It doesn't have any cinnamon. It's not as spicy, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel quite as warm. Something I would wear in the spring and summer, but yeah, this is like my Angel Share version in the spring and summer, even though it doesn't really smell like Angel Share, but still has that apple vibe that I love. So I really do enjoy this one as well. Although the performance is not beast mode on this one. I found it to be just moderate, not super strong. You know, on hot summer days, I think it's gonna be okay. So apple brandy on the rocks. Can't wait to wear this one in the spring and summer. And then also by Killian, I have Love Don't Be Shy. This is the extreme version. This is the version that I prefer. I really do like the original, but I much prefer the extreme because I love the added rose. To me, this smells like marshmallows. Oh, I love this one. This smells like sweet marshmallows and Turkish roast. This just gets better with time too. Plus the performance is better on this one in my opinion. I have compared the two side by side. I took my decant of the original Love and this one and I could smell this one long, long after I could smell the original Love Don't Be Shy. So I don't care what anybody says, this has better performance, okay? <laughs> At least it did on me. But I do really like that Turkish Delight rosy feel to the fragrance and it's just like picture like a bed of marshmallows with some yummy Turkish delight and orange blossom and you have this fragrance. I have two from Giorgio Armani. The first one is Ocean de Gioia. This is a great summertime fragrance. This is a clean, fresh pear scent. There is a very realistic and beautiful pear in the opening of this and I was shocked that I liked this because I usually don't go for this scent profile. Freshies just really aren't my thing, but this smells so good. And I get a lot of compliments on this one. This is so fresh and clean smelling with some juicy pear. And I just think it's great. Plus I get good performance, lots of compliments, and yeah, I just really enjoy this one for summer. And then of course we have My Baby, which is My Way. This is the original Eau de Parfum. I am probably gonna get the intense version when I run out of this bottle because I really like the Intense version as well. I'm not sure which one I like better yet. I haven't had enough time with the Intense version. I've only smelled it in store, but I really loved it. But anyway, this would be my signature scent. If I didn't have all the perfumes I had and I needed to pick a signature scent, it would probably be this one. Like I said, I'm a Tuberose fan. This is Bubblegum Tuberose. This is a lot of Orange Blossom. This is Vanilla. Love this one. Love it, love it, love it. It's delicious. It truly smells like it really re reminds me of bubblegum, which I know that's not everybody's like, not everybody wants to smell like bubblegum. Like a refined, elevated bubblegum, okay? <laughs> I just love, I love tuberose. I'm a big, big fan. And this is a fragrance that has never let me down. Anytime I wear it, I always love it. Love this one. This is probably a top 10 for life for me. Okay, up next we're going to talk about Zerzhoff. So Zerzhoff is a house I have fallen in love with. I don't love everything from Zerzhoff, but I have loved quite a bit of things I've tried from Zerzhoff. So first of all, we have Dama Bianca, which I've raved and raved about. This is kumquat and lime in the opening with vanilla, some iris, some powdery notes, and it is very feminine and delicate and absolutely gorgeous. This was my best blind buy of 2022. This is 100 ml bottle worthy 100%. I'm just waiting to go through this, but as soon as I do, I'm big, I'm getting a 100 ml bottle for sure because I don't ever want to be without Dama Bianca. And the same goes for Italica. Love this one. This is on my tray for this month. I've been wearing it. I just love it more and more every time I wear it. And I think this is such a good, delicious almond cookie gourmand. That's what this smells like. But in the opening, it smells boozy. It smells like a cherry amaretto sour in the opening, but as it dries down, it gets to this like buttery, delicious almond cookie yumminess. <laughs> I truly, truly love this one. 100 ml bottle worthy for sure. I just have to, I don't even know where I'm at on this. I've worn this one a lot this month. All right, up next we have Dolce & Melfi. This is another one that I think is 100 ml worthy. I love this one. It's funny, I had a hard time figuring out when I wanted to wear this. This is a spicy but yet sweet and fruity fragrance. So the fruitiness kind of made me think of springtime, but there are a lot of spices in here as well. There's cloves in here. I ended up realizing I really love this one for fall. I think some people prefer this one in the spring because of the fruitiness that's in here, but there's like apple and quince in here, I believe. It's just such a good fragrance. This smells like a spicy, juicy fruit gum. Very, very sophisticated and elegant juicy fruit gum. And that's one of the reasons why not everybody likes this fragrance. 
but I just love it. I think it smells so good. So yeah, as soon as I run out of this, I will get a 100 ml bottle. The performance on this one is fantastic. Up next, we have Bouquet Ideale, and this is absolutely gorgeous as well. This is cinnamon and nutmeg in the opening. It has some spiciness, but it's not over the top. I don't get a lot of spiciness from this. Mostly this is a woody fragrance. I think there's vanilla in here. There's definitely a lot of woodiness in here. Very sexy. My husband really, really likes this one on me. So another one that I do think is 100 ml worthy once I go through this one. Okay, and recent to my collection is Ivory Root. I had a sample of this one. It was a really interesting journey because when I first sprayed it, I was like, oh, no way. I do not like that. It is way too spicy. This is a spice bomb. The notes are sealed or vaulted and they're not released, but there are a ton of spices in here. There's warm spicy. There's fresh spicy. There's also, I believe, vanilla and tobacco in here. I really do pick up tobacco. I really do pick up vanilla as well. Oh, this is really spicy in the opening. When I first spray this, I'm like, <laughs> for just a minute, but it's when it starts to dry down that the magic happens. This turns into one of the most gorgeous fragrances of all time. The sillage of this is outstanding. When I sprayed it, I was like, no, I don't like it, but I gave it some time, and then I was catching these wafts of this scent that I kept thinking, whoa, what is that smell? And I realized it was me. I realized it was ivory root, and I ordered a bottle because I think it smells incredible. The performance is outstanding. Very sexy, spicy vanilla. Great for cold weather and great for date night. And then we have another one that's new to my collection. This is Shuncoin, and this is a very powdery type of scent. This is an interesting one. I really love this one. It's very powdery. It's very whimsical. It has some sandalwood. It has some woody notes, but it's also this like powdery, I don't know. It's almost like a, I, I swear there's coconut in here. Yeah, to me, this smells like a coconut cookie while you're drinking some tea and there's some powderiness around you. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a tea note in here, I'm pretty sure. It's really good though, I really like it. It smells like Easter to me. Can't wait to wear this one more in the spring and definitely will be an Easter perfume for sure. All right, up next we have my Jean Paul Cotier perfumes. This is La Belle, this is the original ADP pear and vanilla. This is like cooking, baking, kind of boozy pear. Love this one. And then I have Scandal Eau de Parfum, the original. Very honey forward, very loud, very sexy, naughty sexy. <laughs> I love this one. This one gets a lot of hate, but I really love honey perfumes. And this also has patchouli and licorice in the base, which is one of my favorite things. Love this one for date nights. I also have uh, Scandal by Night. This is a lot like the original Scandal, but it doesn't have patchouli and licorice in the base and there's a cherry note added in. I have my one and only Dior fragrance. This is Miss Dior, the Eau de Parfum, the 2017 version. I've already told you guys how I feel about this. <laughs> I was not very happy. I was not a happy camper when they reformulated this. I don't really care for the 2021 version. This was my version. This is sweet orange, rose, and patchouli. Classy, elegant. I do really, truly love this one. This is my most complimented perfume in my collection, by the way, but I don't want to count this one because it's been reformulated into something else, so. <laughs> really wish it hadn't been because I really do prefer this version. I have one fragrance from Bond Number no. 9 and this is New York Nights. I love this one. This one I wore a ton in 2022. One of my most worn fragrances. This is coffee and caramel in the base. There's ylang ylang in here that kind of comes across as like banana bread. There's also some florals in the opening. So it always reminds me of sitting out on a terrace smelling springtime florals and then eating this like warm delicious banana bread and drinking a caramel coffee. Uh, just so fun. I love the journey that this one takes me on. Great performance as well. And then I have one from the house of BDK, but that is going to change because I've been trying a lot of BDK fragrances and they will be added into my collection. Velvet, Tonka, for sure. Probably Tuberose Imperial. I, I've been really liking a lot of the offerings from BDK. This one is Passessoir. This one, I actually went through an entire travel spray before I actually got this bottle. And I think this is not for everyone. Oh, this smells so good. I don't know how people don't like this. <laughs> I know some people don't. This is a polarizing fragrance. Some people really don't like this fragrance, but this has black pepper in the opening. That might be why. 
very, very fruity. Love it. Kind of woody in the base. Absolutely gorgeous. Great performance. I get a really, really good performance out of this one. And I just think this is amazing. So pass the soir is a yes. And I can't wait to add more BDK to my collection. Okay, I have two from a tar collection, which will probably change this year. I have a couple more from this house that I have my eye on. But the first one is Crystal Love for her. This is vanilla and chocolate. Super delicious super comforting. I love this one. Great performance on here. And then this one is Cult at Night, another love of mine. This is a lot like Wajan, but this has like a cherry in the opening instead of apple. So this is very cinnamon heavy at the top, a lot of cherry. There is a little bit of apple in here as well. Some vanilla, patchouli, and musk. Mm, absolutely fantastic if you like cherry cinnamon fragrances and if you like more of like a darker middle eastern base this is a beast mode fragrance okay i have one from alt this is cherry smash number 12 i've worn a lot of this i really really like this dupe this is a dupe for tom ford's lost cherry i have tried tom ford's lost cherry a couple of times i've had a couple of different samples and i really love it like tom ford's lost cherry is such a good fragrance in my opinion. I think it's such a beautiful, cherry, delicious, boozy vanilla fragrance, but I cannot get that thing to perform on me no matter what. Like I said, I've had a few samples now and I literally get no more than an hour. I didn't think it was worth the money, so I decided to get, well actually I got this dupe before I had my samples, but then I got the samples to compare later on. This is pretty close. I don't know that it's 100% spot on, but it's pretty close. It's good enough for me. And then we have by Clinique. This is Cookies and Kisses. This is a very feminine, sweet version of By the Fireplace. By the Fireplace to me was too masculine leaning. And this one smells like that, but definitely sweeter and definitely more on the feminine side. This is much more easy to wear. I don't really want to smell like I'm literally sitting by a fireplace. This smells more like something sweet with some chestnut, you know what I mean? It's 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 in the same vibe as by the fireplace, but I like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit more wearable in my opinion. Then we have by Zadig and Voltaire. This is her. This is such a beautiful chestnut fragrance. This has, well, it has pink pepper in the opening. I think there's whipped cream in here. Definitely pick up something lactonic and creamy. There's definitely vanilla in here. There's a chestnut vibe, but when this dries down, I get a creamy, creamy sandalwood. So it goes on this really fun journey. I get all those other notes, but the dry down is this like creamy, kind of whipped cream, lactonic, vanilla and sandalwood vibe that I really love. This is a comforting, cozy fall time scent. A really good affordable gem in my opinion with really good performance. And then we have one of my favorite date night summer sexy scents. This is by Paco Rabanne. This is Olympia. This is a salty amber vanilla. Lots of salt. You gotta like salt. Very loud fragrance, very sexy fragrance, but I adore it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I cannot be without this one. All right, my only one by Clean Reserve is Radiant Nectar. I just got this one and I absolutely love it. This is a delicious pear, very musky fragrance. I think this smells so good. This is such an easy everyday reach. It's not a super loud fragrance, but I definitely can smell it on me all day. And I'm just so happy with this. Very sweet, but not too sweet. I love the pear in here. I love how clean and musky and refreshing it feels. And I just feel like this would make a great signature scent. Okay, I have three from YSL. The first one is Lieb Intense. This is my favorite one. This is very vanilla centric. It has a lot of white florals that I think are really smooth. It also has some lavender. Beautiful, classy, sophisticated, elegant fragrance that is very strong. I have to be careful not to overspray this because I give myself a headache when I do. Just a couple of sprays, but I smell, I feel like I smell powerful when I wear this one. I also have Mon Pari. This is the EDP version, and this is a pretty good performing fragrance. This is basically a fruit chuli. Lots of fruits in here. There's patchouli in the base, and you have to be a fan of fruit chulis to like this. It smells sweet, classy, uh, great for summertime. Springtime, I think this would be a really great spring fragrance. And like I said, the performance of this is outstanding. This is the only black opium that I own. This is Illicit Green. This one is my favorite out of all the black opiums I've tried. This one I find to be a pretty decent performing 
fragrance. The original Black Opium did not perform very well, so I decluttered that one. This one I really like. It has a freshness to it. It's not as cloying. It's not as sweet with lots of vanilla. It smells like black opium, but there's some tweaks in here that really just make it my favorite. I really do like this one. It, the freshness from the fig really helps to round the fragrance out somehow. And there's more coffee, I feel like, in this one. I definitely pick up more coffee, which helps to kind of tone down the sweetness a little bit. I have two from Valentino. I have Voce Viva. This is the Intensa, I believe it's called. This one is your typical white floral sweet vanilla fragrance very very beautiful easy to wear very mass appealing some people would call this generic some people would call it boring i actually really like this one it is mass appealing for sure but this one i don't know this one just smells a little bit more refined to me a little bit more upscale i'm a big fan of white florals and this is just an easy reach this is an easy reach for springtime every day office appropriate church appropriate meet the parents appropriate you know what i mean the other one by valentino is my loved donna born in roma big fan love this one love the packaging love the juice love the scent it is black currant woody vanilla very feminine I have really good memories with this one. This is very nostalgic. I have really good memories with my husband with this fragrance. And yeah, really enjoy the performance is good. I'm really curious about the new one coming out. So I'll probably be reviewing that one. But yeah, I, I have to have a bottle of this in my collection. I can't imagine not having this one. I have really sentimental feelings towards Donna Board in Roma. I have one from Burberry. This is Burberry Brit. Uh, yeah, Burberry Brit. Yeah, that's what it's called. Very affordable fragrance, but I actually really like this one because it has lime in the opening, and I've been really into lime right now. I don't know why, but there's this really refreshing zingy lime in the opening, and then you get this like almond goodness, and I've been into almond perfumes lately as well, and this is a really good affordable gem. Um, decent performance. And I really do enjoy this one. Another one that's very almondy. This is more of like an almond marzipan type of delicious fragrance. This one is by Reminiscence and this is Heliotrope. Very much smells like marzipan. Mm, it's delicious. I love this one. It's very soft, powdery, marzipan, almond. It smells like Easter. Decent performance. Very affordable. I think I paid like $30 for this and just a very good affordable gem. This next one I've had for a while. This is, I think it's by Serendipity 3. This is Serendipitous. This is a very gourmand foodie. This smells like chocolate chip cookies and oranges. Mm, I love this one. As you can see, I've worn this one quite a bit. This one is very sweet, very baked goods. I've had people think that chocolate chip cookies were baking. One time I had somebody think that uh, they could smell the donut shop next door. <laughs> Another gourmand that is super fun in my opinion. This is Lolita Land by Lolita Limpica. This is widely interpreted. People get a bunch of different things out of this. There are so many notes in here, but basically what I get is a boozy root beer float somehow. I think I'm getting the Bellini and I'm getting the plum and then I'm getting that, there's like patchouli and licorice in the base of this. This is another affordable gem that I don't think it's enough hype. Maybe at one point this was hyped. I think this used to be talked about a lot, but I still think people need to talk about it because it's an affordable gem and it smells sweet for my gourmand lovers. It's worth it to get your nose on it. All right, this is by the Talaferio. This is room 129. This one smells like Hawaiian fruit punch. Really, really fun to wear when I'm in the mood for something like this. Real playful, fun, kind of springtime day. I'd have to wear it you know, when it wasn't very hot outside because this could get cloying. Definitely have to be in the mood for this one though, but I like it. Then we have by Sofia Vergara. This is Sofia. To me, this is a fantastic celebrity scent. Classy, elegant, kind of reminds me a little bit of Coco Mademoiselle. Some people say it's a cross between La Via Belle and Coco Mademoiselle. I kind of get that. You cannot beat it. The performance is absolutely fantastic. If you like fragrances like Coco Mademoiselle, I think you'd like this. I have two by Givenchy. This is Linterdee. This is the EDP. This is absolutely beautiful. Bubblegummy, tuberose. Not over the top bubblegummy though. Not as bubblegummy as my way, but still kind of a bubblegummy tuberose. There's also pear in here. Very, very strong fragrance. This is a winter white floral for me. Very strong. This somehow radiates off of me like nobody's business and I cannot spray very much of this, but I really love it. It's very classy, sophisticated, very strong fragrance. So you have to like tuberose to like this for sure. I also really enjoy Linter de Rouge. I'm very spicy. It's a spicy, it's got ginger, I believe, in the opening. Spicy pimento leaf, I believe. 
tuberose is in here as well, but it's not as bubblegummy as the original. It's a sexy fragrance. I enjoy this one quite a bit. Love the bottle. Performance is really good. Not as strong as the original though. I don't feel like, you know, I've worn this one in the fall. I, I didn't feel like I needed a super cold day in order to wear this. I feel like spicy, white floral fragrances. Definitely check this one out. And then we have by Erin. This is Hibiscus Palm. I fell head over heels in love with this one. This is absolutely beautiful. This is creamy, coconut, vanilla, but there's also a lot of tropical florals in here. So if you like tropical floral scents, this is very upscale, very refined smelling. It doesn't smell beachy or sunscreeny at all. Just absolutely love this one and performance is outstanding. All right, now we're gonna talk about the House of Guerlain. So I have Mon Guerlain Intense. This is one of my favorite date night scents. I talk about this one a lot. This is very sexy, but yet classy sophisticated lavender vanilla lots of vanilla and there's also patchouli and licorice in the base very sexy very strong beautiful date night appropriate type of fragrance my favorite date night scent for sure my husband's favorite perfume on me as well then we have la petite robe noir intense this is blueberry and cotton candy in the opening the base kind of reminds me a little bit of coco mademoiselle vibes i really like the way this fragrance smells but I'm having a hard time with the performance. So a lot of you said when I first got it a few months ago to set it aside, let it sit, it'll get stronger. I did that. It's on my tray for January. I've been wearing it and I'm still not getting great performance out of this, you guys. I don't know if I just go nose blowing to this because not many people have complained about the performance of this fragrance. So I'm guessing that I go nose blind to this fragrance, unfortunately. I don't know, it's on the chopping block. Because I mean, even if the performance is great on this perfume, if I can't smell it, you know, what good is that? It's kind of frustrating. So I'm gonna keep going. I'll give it a couple more wears, but if it doesn't improve, then I'll probably end up decluttering this one. Unfortunately, I really hate that because I think it's an absolutely gorgeous scent. And then we have Spiritueuse Double Vanille, my favorite vanilla in my collection. This is a very special bottle for me and the scent is just absolutely fantastic. It's a boozy, woody vanilla, and I think it's very formal smelling, very upscale, very grown-up vanilla. It's not a cupcakey, sweet, gourmand vanilla. It's a very grown-up, just boozy, woody vanilla that I really enjoy. Okay, let's talk about Afnon. I've discovered a couple really, really good hidden gems from Afnon. The first one is La Fleur Bouquet, and I think this is a dupe for Ex Nihilo's. I never can remember the name. What is it? Fleur Narcotique, I think. I smelled that fragrance once. I can't tell you if this is a dupe, but I do know this is an absolutely beautiful fragrance. This is a fruity white floral, basically. It has peach in the opening, or maybe it's not peach. I think a lot of people think it smells like peach in the opening. To me, it just smells very fruity, definitely very white floral, musky, feminine, really good smelling, amazing performance. You cannot beat it for this price. I paid like 30 bucks for this. Highly, highly recommend this fragrance. And then also I have Modest Dew, which is also a really good performing fragrance that I paid around $30 for. This smells a lot like La Nuit Tresor by Lancome. It doesn't smell like the original. Like the original is very dark based, praline, patchouli licorice in the base with a lot of strawberry for me in the opening. This is more cherry and almond. And then the other one by Afnon, I'm not that familiar with. I haven't worn it much yet. This is called Futura La Femme. I'm saving this one for hot days. This is a very musky, clean. It's definitely a very good smell, but it's kind of a lighter, musky clean type of smell. I need to give this a few wears in the summertime to really get a feel for this one, but this hasn't been one that I've been in the mood to reach for. So once I get more wears out of this one, I'll be able to give you a better idea of what I think, but I really think it smells good but I have to wear it a little bit more. Then we have Kim Kardashian by Kim Kardashian. This is an extremely white floral forward fragrance. There's Gardenia in here, which is what I smell a lot of. So if you don't like Gardenia, you're not gonna like this. This smells really, really close to Gucci Bloom. Great performance, fraction of the price. If you like white florals, if you like gardenia, I think you'd really like this one. I think this is great for springtime. And then we have by Britney Spears, this is Midnight Fantasy. This is a fun fragrance that I wear to bed. I usually don't wear this any other time. It doesn't have blueberry in it. I think it's like plum and cherry or something like that. But for some reason it comes across as blueberry to me. It smells like a blueberry starburst, like what I would imagine a blueberry starburst to smell like if there were blueberry starbursts. <laughs> very, very sweet. 
very fun. I like to layer this with uh, Bath and Body Works blueberry pancakes, like blueberry sugar pancakes, I think is what it's called. Yeah, not really great performance. I don't get great performance out of this one, but I do really enjoy wearing this one to bed. Oh, I have one by Latafa. This is from the Pride Collection, and this is Nabras. Lots of airtime on this one lately, lots of hype. I think it's worth the hype. I think this is a great fragrance. I think this is a great affordable fragrance. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but I looked on a couple of discounted websites, and it's under the $50 mark. But this is a fruity gourmand. Very vanilla, cacao, lots of fruits, like red berries and orange in the opening. Super sweet, fruity gourmand. If you like fruity gourmands, I think you'd like this. This is a really enjoyable, easy reach fragrance. It's so easy to wear and I think it smells incredible, especially for the price and really good performance as well. And then we have Vanilla Bourbon. This is the Eau de Parfum by Mix Bar. Yeah, Mix Bar. This is one that you get at Target. Super affordable and shocked me actually. I was not expecting to like this as much as I do. And this is not your basic boring vanilla, which is what I kind of thought it was going to be. There's like black pepper in the opening. There's, I think there's tobacco blossom in here. Uh, really interesting, surprisingly really good vanilla fragrance. I mean, it's not the best vanilla fragrance I've ever smelled, but it's pretty decent. All right, we have my loved Daisy by Marc Jacobs. This is the Eau de Toilette version. Yeah, I know a lot of people love to hate on this fragrance. A lot of people love to hate on Marc Jacobs fragrances, Daisy in particular. This has been done over and over and over again so many times. There's like a thousand flankers at this point. I still really like this fragrance. I think this is a beautiful springtime fragrance. Performance is okay. It's not super great, but I have nostalgic feelings towards this. Like this is a very nostalgic fragrance for me. And it is a perfume that I will always love. It's a white floral, sweet, fruity fragrance. This one does have some violet in it as well, but uh, normally I don't get along with violet, but I really like it in here. So that's Marc Jacobs Daisy, the Eau de Toilette. And then we have by Jessica Simpson. This is Fancy. I love this one. I still do. I think this is a great celebrity fragrance. Vanilla, caramel, some red berries. Very sweet, very comforting, very cozy. This is so delicious. I really like this one. Plus, um, the performance is okay, moderate. I don't get like the best performance out of this, but I've definitely had worse. Very, very affordable. Uh, yeah, still rocking with this one. Still like this one a lot. All right, this is my only Dua fragrance, although I want to change that because there's a couple of Dua fragrances. I realize that Dua has their own fragrances as well. Like they have their original blends and then they have those like hybrid ones. It's not just a dupe house. They're more than that. And I've been looking on their website and there are a couple that I kind of have my eye on. But anyway, I have She Loves Red and this is a dupe for Rouge Smoking. Really fell in love with the way it smells. It smells like a cherry Coke to me. And I just love it. It, and I was so disappointed because when I was wearing it, it just, I struggled to smell it on myself. So I got the dupe from Dua and I will say this is pretty close and it's stronger. I do get better performance out of this. I know that everybody says that when it comes to clones, that's not always the case, but in this case, I really do feel like this is good performance. I can, I don't struggle to smell this on me and it smells pretty close to Rouge Smoking. So really enjoy this dupe. All right, Ely Saab, I have Girl of Now Shine. I do have a decant of the original Girl of Now, which I really enjoy, but I love the added pineapple in here. This basically smells like Girl of Now with pineapple. The pineapple in here is super yummy. So really, really love this one. And then this is Girl of Now Forever. This is a very spring summery. This is lemon peel in the opening. It's got like this zesty, zingy lemon. It also has some raspberry and then it kind of smells, it smells like a raspberry lemon tart. Very zingy in the opening though. You have to be a fan of like zingy lemon to like this. All right, we have by Victor and Roth Flower Bomb. I don't really think I have to go into too much detail about how this smells. This is a sugary, flower, fruity, patchouli fragrance that everybody wore in 2016. <laughs> and I just got a bottle of in 2022, so you know, I'm part of the cool kids now, but I really love this one. I didn't really like it back then, but I got a sample of it recently and I really enjoyed it a lot. I'm into patchouli, love the kind of patchouli that's in here. I think it smells very sweet, very feminine, very uh, pretty and really good performance. So enjoy this one a lot. My favorite flower bomb, however, is nectar. Flower Bomb Nectar. Love this one. This is not easy to wear though. This is a fun fragrance, but it's not an easy reach. There's gunpowder in the opening of this. It's just really unique. It's unique and fun. 
Kind of makes me feel like a badass because of the gunpowder. Really, really love this one. I don't reach for a lot though. I need to change that. All right, we are down to my last two fragrances. These are both by Mugler. The first one is Angel Muse. This is the EDT. This is Passion Fruit, Hazelnut, Patchouli. Such an odd fragrance. It's so odd but I love it. I just adore it. Great performance. Even though it's an EDT, absolutely outstanding performance. You will not struggle to smell this on you. I get a big blast of passion fruit, get a lot of the hazelnut, and then I get this like, you know, patchouli vibe, but not dirty, not like earthy. There's a little bit of a vetiver vibe in the base of this. I don't know. It's just such an odd, like fruity, chocolatey, earthy fragrance. It's so weird, but so addicting somehow. I just love this one. Last, but certainly not least, I think this is the best designer release of 2022 that I tried anyway. This is Alien Goddess Intense. Love this one. I had a travel size of this one, went through the entire travel size in a very short amount of time, like within a month. This is a very jasmine forward, but super smooth and creamy. So they put a lot more of that alien jasmine and they mixed it in with goddess. They made the coconut not as like sunscreeny. The coconut's in here, but it's very smooth. It's creamy with a lot of vanilla, a lot of smooth uh, jasmine that doesn't smell heavy. Gorgeous. I was like, love it for sniff. This is my favorite alien. This is the only alien I own. I feel like if you took the regular alien and alien goddess and they had a baby, you'd have this perfume and it's just very smooth smelling to me. Really, really enjoy this one. Oh my gosh, you guys, we made it. That is it. Those are my perfumes in my collection. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a long one. And thanks for sticking with me if you're still here. I really appreciate you guys. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye.